Welcome, everybody, to the Cold Pop Show podcast. You are joining myself, AJ, and my good friend, Richard, for another episode of film franchise Fortnite here on the Cold Pop Show podcast, where we watch a different film franchise every fortnight. This year, 2024, we're, of course, only watching film franchises with two entries. We called it Too Fast, Too Franchise. No, Too... Too Fast. Too Film Too. Too Fast for two franchises. We're this year... We're we're only doing one film franchises because we're we're too fast for two film franchises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard, <laughs> um, before we get into the show though, I do want to reflect upon something we haven't really officially announced, but kind of jokingly announced. Oh yes. And I'd like to it, to draw it into into you're huh? officially canonizing it. Yeah, I thought so. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have just dis- we decided a while back our goal is for the film franchise Fortnite's uh series of cold pop to more or less uh come to a, a slow stop <laughs> by the 10 year mark um which is will be mid 2026 yep. i believe so that is currently the plan is for us to uh, probably, you know, Cold no. Pop Show, I'm sure, will live on in some kind of, like, capacity. Yeah. But, like, it, it, our, the, the, our... the Star Wars episode in mid-2026, because we've always said we'll end with Star yeah. Wars, um, is yeah. because I don't want to do the podcast anymore if we're covering Star Wars. Uh, yeah. But the that's our Logan. Yeah. But there is, you know, there's potential for a Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm sure. There's, of course, of course. Um, so I thought I would just sort of make that plan go from beyond Discord rumor to, um, you know, never say never, but that's our projection. Um, and because by the 10 year mark as well, we've probably covered enough franchises, I think, that anything more that could be learned from them. Yeah. Well, there wouldn't be anything more to, to learn from the. We can finally write the book. Yeah, we can finally write the book. All of this is to say that I think that if there is any one of you listening out there that has yet to uh, sort of say hi to us over the years, I reckon you've got a ticking clock now. It's a pretty long yeah. lead in, but I would, I would love to meet some of the... Uh, silent majority that apparently mm. listen to every one of our episodes uh because that discord it's it's a bustling place but it's certainly not uh, a one-to-one ratio of listener to discord member um so that's like and i'm not saying this out of ego or out of um desperation more just out of curiosity i thought it would be cool um to maybe hear from some people who have been listening for a lot longer than we might have assumed yeah. because those numbers have been the way they are for a while. So if you're one of those people, you know, it doesn't have to be in the Discord, but find a way yeah. to reach out and, and say hi. Tell us when you've been listening from and tell us where you've been listening from. And I think what AJ's saying as well is like, you know, especially if you're an attractive female, right? Mm-hmm. Right, AJ? That's what, yeah, that's what he's only getting at, for, you big dog. Only for you big the... Dog. the yeah, that is true, but not for my own personal lust, but for the concerning optics that I have for this podcast and the uh, the general clientele it usually attracts. Is, yeah, when you uh, when you say optics, it's just because so many of our fan base are just hard to look at. <laughs> not at all. More just like the 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 most uh, female pocket we have of our of our listenership is probably more um enlightened men than it is actual women like that's probably right, the closest just, thing we yeah, have yeah, to, feminist a, to a men. female audience <laughs> yeah <laughs> feminist men um and look or i guess like ultimately i'm saying that if enough of you come out uh we won't stop the podcast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's got to happen first um but anyway we are getting into it today, Richard. We are covering a duology that is long since uh, laid, uh, I would say, dead, but more dormant. Dead would be funnier for the pun, for the franchise in question, though. Um, over Us, it's been one that is, that I know a certain Mike, uh, no yes, from <laughs> our Patreon, has been uh, commenting ad infinitum since p- maybe as soon as we allowed people to vote for <laughs> franchises. Uh, certainly well before um, 
we decided to only do two film franchises this year. Uh, it is a franchise that Mike has told us he believes will replace what was previously the nymphomaniac constant of a perfect zero franchise uh, that has now been replaced with the speed constant because we felt that speed and speed two cruise control was a much more accessible version of what we're mm. talking about with the nymphomaniac uh, movies. Um, so I guess we're here today to discuss that Richard. And of course the franchise we're talking about is weekend at Bernie's. And I know what you're thinking weekend at Bernie's two. Those are the films in question. You were thinking that yeah. or Call me a mind reader. You could say I have The Shining because I can read your mind, Richard. Wow. I think that's what The Shining means. Do you know what's funny? Is it- this is completely a point I'm throwing away from the next podcast. But when I watched The Shining recently, and because we were talking beforehand about like how much we remembered about The Shining and stuff like that, because it was with sort of friends and been various years since we've seen it. I was like, no, like I think I have a pretty good memory of it. When the actual mind reading Shining part came in, I was like, I forgot this was part of the film. I forgot that mm. the titular Shining was part of The Shining. If you'd asked me to recap the plot, I wouldn't have mentioned that at all. <laughs> Well, I've never been more tempted to talk about a uh, future episodes <laughs> franchise than I am right now. It feels strangely inviting to start that conversation. Um, but no, we're going to stick, I think, with Weekend at Bernie's. Tell you what, I think there's something in The Shining that's also about, like, contacting the dead. So, like, maybe someone could have contacted Bernie, you know? Mm. There's certainly room for parallels and crossovers within the weekend at bernie's um franchise the first film weekend at bernie's came out uh, came out in 1989 the second in 1993 mm. richard weekend at bernie's one was directed by ted kotchiff who has directed one film we've seen before in film franch- film franchise fortnights and it's a very funny one to pair with weekend at bernie's it's a it's a bananas uh film yeah uh he directed first blood correct he is the director of first blood the first rambo film uh i reckon in all our years of pointing out how funny it is that a certain director has directed two pretty different seeming films you know you've got your george millers with your mad max and babe and a few others like it I reckon this is the funniest one. I reckon mm. there is nothing further from like a harrowing look into the post-traumatic effects of v- that Vietnam, the Vietnam War might have on one of its soldiers. I reckon there is, on the other side of the spectrum of that, is two dipshits carry around a dead body for a weekend, you know? Yeah, yeah. I reckon this is it. This is a big moment. What did you think of <laughs> this is a big uh, moment. weekend at Drink Bernie's? it in, guys. The funniest comparison we've had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is Weekend at Bernie's about and what did you uh, think of it? All right, well, I'll just stall a little bit to let everyone, um, you know, catch their breath from all the laughing they've been doing at that comparison. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Weekend at Bernie's, hadn't seen it before, but it's a, the general concept of Weekend at bernies ing is very uh it's one of these things it's a that's, generic shorthand uh, yeah it's more famous than the film itself like if you if you talked about doing a weekend at bernie's or like a sitcom does like a weekend at bernie's episode it is you understand you're on board with the concept you understand what that means that it is one or two people pretending that someone who is dead or unconscious is alive and conscious um and mm. but through you know putting sunglasses on them and manip- manipulating them but yeah it comes from this film it's about these two guys one of whom is named richard parker which is um spider-man crazy dad is that? and the tiger in life of pi you're telling me there are three fairly significant pop cultural richard parkers yeah. this would have blown my mind when i was 22 richard this would have been all we'd talk about for about 20 minutes of the podcast covering weekend at bernie's you know yeah. i'd i'd have written some kind of like loose thread that connects all three characters etc etc yeah and you wouldn't have told me about it and it would really it would yeah. negatively affect our friendship and and you would have like constructed a similar like uh, <laughs> write up about it as well, but I would have got to it first. And oh yeah, and yeah. you would have told me no, no, can I do it instead? And um, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Good references there, AJ. Anyway, so... We're really weakened at Bernie, Bernie's in our own podcast this episode, <laughs> aren't we? We're like, yeah, it's fucking dying, and AJ's just gone on a bullshit riff about something that's not very funny. Um, if if we were younger, this would be more exciting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so they, uh, they work at an insurance company, and they discover uh, some embezzlement. They take it to their boss, uh, and think that oh my god he's going to be so proud that we've found this um, this embezzling of funds and then turns out their boss bernie lomax which is it's it's weird that i i I knew the name bernie lomax already like for some reason i knew his last name was lomax i don't know where that got through in pop culture in my brain but Mm -hmm. he um he to their faces says oh my god this is great guys uh come to my have a weekend at my place in the hamptons and uh you know to celebrate you you figuring this out for us he then goes to his mob connections and says hey these two guys you gotta whack them for me you gotta whack them off the face of the earth uh they whack them right off and uh then turns out the he bernie's been sleeping with one of the mobster's wife so they, they're like well no let's just kill bernie so then uh, when they arrive at Bernie's on the weekend, uh, he's he's dead. He they, he was given a lethal heroin overdose, um, so he was feeling pretty good when he died. So he's got this part of the comedy and the 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 plot hinges on the fact that he has a a pretty like content look on his face the whole time, um, mm, mm. and yeah, he's just got the slight smile, like sort of easy going eyebrows and. For some stu- stupid fucking reason, the two guys, the two dipshits, as you mentioned early, earlier, uh, get the idea in their head to just pretend Bernie's alive so that the cops don't find out and think that they killed him. Uh, because also th- this party shows up. Yeah, it's not exactly the, the smoothest mission statement, is it? Yeah, They're just because all these like, people show up because yeah. Bernie has parties every weekend. So they're like, oh, we can't do it here and they try to call the cops but then there's this chick there that one of them is into and so he's like it's all very funny it's all it's all very funny uh and yeah anyway they're they're then trying to just make it look like he's alive for long enough that they won't be suspects and of course now the, the people that put out the hit um that that did kill bernie uh then thinking oh my god it didn't actually kill him and yeah just like uh late 80s hijinks ensue yeah yeah um a woman sleeps with the dead bernie that's true that's very fun lots of fun shit like that happens in this movie there's a there's a um a section near the end of the film where it just takes a right turn into uh, transphobia for a little bit, mm. just because they're bored and they want to like that was the talk 80s. about something else. Yeah. For- <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Weekend at Bernie's. What what do you think this has on Ron Tomatoes? Uh, I would guess it's like I, I would guess it's not fresh. I'm going to say like 53. 54 percent. Yeah. So we like jumped into this beloved comedy mike noise who suggested this and who has had like a fairly rough go as far as cop pop show listeners go have like in re- getting us to watch their favorite <laughs> movies because yeah. we typically don't uh well at least when we did phantasm we mm. were pretty harsh on that i think he nearly stopped listening to the podcast to be frank i nearly um, stopped doing and- the podcast <laughs> because i hated those movies so much and but then we've got like another comedy where it's like mike i don't know what you want us to say even by general consensus standards this only has 54 percent on rotten tomatoes <laughs> uh, yeah what did you think though do you agree with that consensus yeah yeah i i, I didn't think it was very good <laughs> i um i don't really remember laughing at any points um it's it's very of its time it's just like even um films films around this time and and like 80s comedies it's just like we've seen such better ones of uh, there are Mm. such better ones that like weekend at bernie's has kangaroo uh, jack yeah kangaroo jack uh but like weekend at bernie's it it, it's it's stayed in the pop cultural consciousness because the design of bernie is so iconic and the um the 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 uh plot is so the mechanic of it is just so like yeah it's it's 
a film has mm. to exist like this it's, it's one of those out, it's like, outlived its own reputation but it's like well. when you said um that as as soon as we started telling stories eventually we were going to get a man that kills you in your dreams was going to happen mm-hmm. as soon as we started telling stories a wacky comedy about two people that have to pretend a third person is alive was destined to to become a thing like it's it's so ripe for comedy it's such a it's not like an obvious premise um necessarily but it's like yeah of course um and i think they they do i will say they do an incredible job of either um either either terry kiss kaiser who plays um yeah. bernie like th- there's a lot of it where it's like there has to be a very good dummy made because you just can't you couldn't do that with a human being but there's a lot of stuff where it's like you can't do that with a dummy that has to be him and like for a performance which is literally having a an expression frozen on your face and being completely limp he's bloody good in the film but <laughs> like it's uh, yeah playing a corpse it's 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 very good and and i think especially for 1989 it does an incredible job of you can never really tell when it's him and when it's not assuming there are times it's not i don't i don't know the behind the scenes but like um yeah and and keeping that seamless um which is something that i feel like they would struggle to do even today yeah i mean i can tell you there was apparently a stunt double who uh, did some of the stuff for real which is pretty full on apparently he got injured in the scene where bernie is like being pulled behind a boat uh like like a jet ski not a jet ski a water ski uh kind of thing um but interestingly enough you say that like when you're talking about like eventually humans were going to come up with the story uh weekend of bernie's is not the first to do it did you know this there is there is a couple examples of films that could be described as weekend at bernsian yes. uh that predate it including what is widely believed to be what the film itself is based off uh which is an indian uh hindi film called uh or it translates to let it go mates or let it go friends <laughs> um that is yeah it is essentially a much it came out in 1983 it is a much lower uh you know production value version mm. of uh weekend at bernie's um so even even the film itself the generic shorthand it's it's capable of it, 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 it like is responsible for is not you yeah, know it's well. not even the original one but, yeah i mean there's something like if you told me um like you know i i i know my shakespeare a little but if you told me that uh, uh, there was a shakespeare play with it like you told me in the tempest uh, there's a whole mm. subplot uh, where it, where it gets real wacky and they have to it's it's like yeah it's, it's very farcical and um yeah it, mm. it it feels like it's always it's always has and always to- will totally. exist it, it feels like i could find out weekend at bernie's is actually based off the tempest and i'd go oh yeah that makes sense you know if, <laughs> yeah, if yeah. oh brother we're out there i can be the odyssey yeah um there's also i also I want to I just make it well. clear that i deliberately picked the tempest because that's a funny one because i know enough okay. about the tempest to know that of course it's not going to have this in it so people are going <laughs> actually um the tempest is probably the worst thing you could have picked no i know that was the joke Mm. It'd be in fucking two mm. gentlemen of Verona or some shit. <laughs> Three gentlemen, because one of them's dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I f- listeners of our Patreon episode might also remember me saying I was going out for a movie night on a recent episode to watch the film Nine to Five, the Dolly Parton mm. movie. I did watch it, and Richard, I watched this in between weekends at Bernie's, <laughs> and <laughs> you watched it during the week at Bernie's. My- <laughs> I split my weekends up with a nine to five <laughs> in, in the middle. And I was quite surprised to find that you could, you know, pretty much describe nine to five as a weekend at Bernie's type wow. movie as well. Like I wasn't expecting that going in, but it's, it's sort of like a gender reversed weekend at Bernie's where the boss isn't dead, but he's unconscious or thought to be dead for some of it. And they're like trying to manipulate. Wow. It's very, it was very funny. I liked it more than both weekend at Bernie's movies. So yeah. check out nine to five. <laughs> what did you, what um, did you think of it? 
I liked it, I think, more than you did. I think that, like, it was... Again, I'd never seen it before, and all I knew was, like, two guys puppet a dead body, and Mm. inexplicably, there's a sequel. Uh, And I think I wasn't necessarily expecting um, Bernie to be such a sleazebag, and I thought that really added to it. It, 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 It feels... Mm. you feel more endeared to the dead version of the character like that's yeah. the kind that's yeah, the yeah, version totally. of bernie that i like and i think that's only possible because he's depicted as such a scumbag uh when he's alive mm. um and is literally pretty much the villain like yeah. trying to Although get the characters you, killed when you first meet him um he's like a real cool nice guy inviting them to the hamptons and then yeah uh turns out no he's actually just uh luring them uh and he's gonna mm. get them killed but yeah in the opening scene i was like when he was talking to them about like oh my god thank god you guys found this i was gonna message you and be like i like how bernie's just a cool dude but then i was like no richard i bet this there's gonna be a twist in the next scene and i'm and i tell you i'm glad i held off because i would have looked like quite the fool Mm, mm. um i think that the weirdest thing about this um comedy this movie and it's like it's it depends on who you ask because this obviously this came out in 1989 so there were a lot of different um interpretations and reactions to it um the like roger ebert hated it and a bunch of other popular reviews at the time were basically saying this is just disgusting this is tasteless like Mm. how can you make light of something like dragging a dead body around which feels like such a fuddy-duddy complaint to make by like today's media consumption standards like this feels pretty tame by the the amount of stuff that that, yeah yeah i I know what you mean but i just am not necessarily these people fit into those cultures but like dead bodies and manipulation of dead bodies and stuff is like a very sacred thing in a lot of cultures Mm. and so it's like i can understand why um like i mean like like you say like we've seen worse nowadays but i can also understand why you know this this film could potentially be banned in certain markets and things like that because it is a very sensitive subject and something that you know i'm not going to uh make light of other people having an issue with necessarily um because you'll just leave that to me yeah yeah, 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 you can do it yeah um i think that if there was one area of this film that i would punch up i probably would have made it more sadistic (laughs) i probably would have (laughs) leaned into it more because it's it's kind of like this out of body experience where you're watching this silly like 80s comedy that doesn't doesn't uh insist upon itself more than it you know it, it just is what it is uh but then there's like this kind of this very like the scene where um bernie is killed it's all just done very quietly and simply and it's kind of eerie because of that Mm. like it's it's such a professional hit and it's like this is probably what getting killed in real life would look like just there's no scream there's no like fear to it it's all just very simple and very easy for the the hitman in particular um and like then you've got these people dragging a dead body around and i guess it's like it all could like lean into the the horrific nature of this in a way that's really interesting but i think they would prefer the audience stay on the other side of the threshold of just not thinking about it too much yeah. whereas i guess i would like to see the version of this movie where they did think about it too much and it became this kind of like super grim macabre story about being exposed to a dead body for such a long yeah. time do you know what i've just you've just made me think of a new continue the franchise uh which i'm gonna just say here um but like yeah okay you know how uh christopher landon made happy death day which was like a horror remake of groundhog day and then he yeah. also did freaky which is like a horror remake of yeah. freaky friday imagine a horror remake yeah. of weekend at bernie's by christopher landon i mean it's- yes that 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 is essentially also what i'm <laughs> pitching here yeah. is, is like that that like i feel like this is such a macabre idea but it's such a light execution yeah like when he did freaky everyone was like what other 80s movies could he do and you know people say like the breakfast club you know everyone's in detention but one of them's a killer or some shit but no weekend at bernie's is actually like a great shout i reckon <laughs> 
totally, totally. I agree. Um, yeah. So I I thought that about it. I also thought like it needed a moment where like the characters would like narrowly escape danger or something with the Bernie corpse, and then they all like hug or something and there's this moment where like they now consider bernie part of their like friends like they have a friendship with this corpse because like all the posters and images for both movies kind of imply that there is like a like he is the third buddy yeah yeah but it's i feel like i would have really dug that if there was like they feel emotional about saying goodbye to the dead body or something by the end Mm. and it's like yeah, we've been through so much, the three of us together, you know, but but no. Um, yeah, so those, I, I again, I think I liked it a bit more than you because, I, I don't know, I just thought that some of the concepts were pretty well pulled off, but didn't love it or anything. One thing that I did think, though, is that Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman, who play uh, Larry and Richard, the two main characters who aren't Bernie, um, they look like alternate universe casting choices for challenges uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they they look like mike feist and um what's the other dude's name josh josh o'connor yeah yeah they look like those guys and it's funny that that should also pop up in a movie that is like emphasizes a trio at the center of it, which hilariously leaves us with the conclusion that Bernie is in fact Zendaya in this um, mm. uh, threesome, this wonderful threesome. <laughs> Not a threesome in either film, though, is there? This wonderful threesome um, should have been the name of the film. Yeah, there you go. it was nearly called uh, Hot and Cold. Was it the original working title oh, yeah. for it? um there was another couple that weren't very interesting i think weekend at bernie's is an incredible title i I really like that as a title i like that it's yeah i I like the the kind of like the way it downplays the events you know like what could what could possibly go wrong Um, (laughs) yeah yeah bernie's you might find in, in two days what could go wrong yeah yeah exactly what you might find interestingly though interesting though richard is that despite uh the title the movie um actually shows the characters arriving on bernie's island the island he lives on the private island at 6 30 p.m on a friday and the movie's events end around early evening on saturday meaning richard <laughs> they don't even spend I, the whole bloody weekend i was there. wondering Isn't about that, that during the film that is such a perfect piece of trivia that is such an um actually that is such a like who are the actual five armies in battle of the five armies you know it's like of course it's such a um how many dalmatian puppies did uh pongo have or there were actually four musketeers that kind of thing like it is such like like if i ever make a movie in which like the title implies something i'm gonna make it if you actually look into it the title doesn't happen right so (laughs) so you prefer that i think it's kind of interesting i think it is one of those things where like someone will use a technique in a video they're hoping goes viral where they'll like get a small piece of information wrong so that people argue with it it's like kind of like a great way to get people talking about the film potentially hmm Speaking of uh, Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman as well, according to IMDb, this is the one dumb piece of IMDb trivia I could find. Um, Andrew McCarthy, uh, sorry, no, the the Jonathan Silverman Film Foundation, which is a thing that exists, uh, has rated um, Weekend at Bernie's as the second greatest Jonathan Silver film, John- Jonathan Silverman film of all time. Wow, isn't that interesting that the Jonathan Silverman Foundation? decided that this was the second best one uh, do you know what the first is no i didn't even think to look it up oh, but yeah. when you look up this guy on wikipedia it's like yeah he's known for weekend at bernie's so i can't imagine <laughs> he's also a brighton beach memoirs which is maybe his most yeah, i bet that's it he's also in caddyshack 2 mm. he's in the hunger okay. maybe that's the he's first in the hungover games Oh really? Oh, he one was in of, Beethoven's which... Treasure Tale, one of the most obscure films. Oh, now you're ruining. Now you're ruining future fun that I've prepared for us on this podcast, Richard. I might as well just tell you now. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got interrupt like unplanned places for 
and for statistics here, for useless statistics here. Yep, Jonathan Silverman was in Beethoven's Treasure Tale, but he was also in Beethoven's Big Break. Wow. So two Beethoven films that he was in. Terry Kaiso plays Bernie. We've seen him before in uh, Friday the 13th Part uh, 7, The New Blood. Um, and... Uh, we have also seen, oh no, I'll save, we've got one more, but it's for Weekend at Bernie's too, so I'll save it for that. Um, Weekend at Bernie's, Richard, has maybe the shortest production section I've ever seen on a Wikipedia page for a movie of this yeah, approximate yeah. size. Like, it is such a short paragraph detailing how this movie was made. Most of it is just about where it was filmed, but the first line I thought was interesting where it says, um... Uh, John Cryer was originally cast in the film but was replaced by Andrew McCarthy and does this movie not just like scream early John Cryer then? yeah man I, I could I, I actually is this not the most John Cryer coded yeah part of the reason I couldn't <laughs> enjoy the film as much is because it was literally screaming early John Cryer I mean I couldn't hear most of it yeah I it agree. feels like exactly. a, um, yeah I mean you know he's he's known for playing and and things with two men and then someone who for some reason arguably doesn't count as a full man mm, yeah two two yeah oh my god he could have played two and a half men years before the tv show um Roger Ebert uh, gave the film one out of four stars i mentioned this before but he says it's sort of maybe the the crux of how i think people both criticize and talk about weekend at bernie's these days this was the main line from his review weekend at bernie's makes two mistakes it gives us a joke that isn't very funny and it expects the joke to carry the entire movie so similar to what you're saying about this generic shorthand it's such a trope now i think the criticism also comes from the fact that like this is something that's hard to sustain for a whole movie and it has a sequel. It's like Speed and Speed 2 again. Like, it's such a funny idea to to sequelize this concept. So did you have any thoughts on that before we um, mosey on over to Weekend at Bernie's? I Street? don't have any thoughts on anything, dude. Wow. Well, it's not looking good for Weekend at Bernie's 2, Richard, which came out in 1993. Uh, directed by Robert Klein, who wrote the original Weekend at Bernie's, but he's also uh, credited as writing one other film we've covered before on the podcast. Any stabs in the dark you want to take here? Uh... What film have we watched that seemed Weekend at Burn- Bernie's 2-esque? Uh, my only... The, the, my, the main comparison I would have for this film was... Um gremlins 2 well that's joe dante which yeah you reckon this is a gremlins 2 type sequel yeah where it's like the first one may be one of the most defined sequels we've ever covered oh yeah well that that was just sort of the the thing i immediately compared it to where it's like you've got this i I mean it feels weird to say grounded um like (laughs) 80s comedy film and then the second one is just ridiculous I'm increasingly finding myself having to very liberally use the term grounded to describe things. So I yeah. know how you feel, feel there. Yeah. Um, no, it's the, uh, he also wrote national lampoons, European vacation, oh, yes. which was my favorite vacation film. So, you know, maybe there's hope yeah, yet yeah, for my yeah, feelings yeah. towards Eric Idle's weekend at Bernie's too. Silly, uh, bike. Oh, it's so funny. Um, If the first film had 54% on Rotten Tomatoes, what do you think this famously unnecessary sequel is? I would guess like 12. Close. It's got 13%. So we're really looking at like a a really solid, uh, what, like less than fresh combined? (laughs) No, not quite. quite, Just over fresh combined score for the whole franchise. Um, I didn't know what Weekend at Bernie's 2 was about before watching it. Mm. Did you know what it's about, Richard? Because I think this is a fairly fun plot, like Creative, in a bad yeah. way, yeah, yeah. Like, cr- cr- a crazy way to continue this franchise. Richard, will you regale us with the synopsis, please? The The money that Bernie embezzled in the first film is still missing. And so this, uh, like, this voodoo queen uh, hires... <laughs> is hired by mobsters who want to find the hidden money and they end up like doing a um a ritual so that these are like the 
the people working for the voodoo side of things um do this ritual but they they half ass it to try and bring bernie back to life and so he not he doesn't become conscious he doesn't fully come back to life but his body is animated when he can hear music and then our the two dipshits from the first film end up uh embroiled in the uh the whole thing again um and yeah it's it's basically the MacGuffin of the film is the money and then Bernie is the compass which will point towards it and so it's a trying to it's a back and forth of, of who has control over Bernie. He who controls mm. Bernie controls the money. Yeah. And like they somehow in like it's set like moments after the first film, which I thought was interesting coming out like yeah, well, um, it's, it's four years later. Posing. Well, that, I guess that's. I bet you that was the main thrust yeah. for why it had to take place immediately totally. after. Um, but they contrive it so that they get back to like an island again by the end of the film, and Bernie walks underwater, and they have to scuba dive after him to get the treasure, and then they accidentally like harpoon him through the head, and it's again this thing that would be um super sadistic if the movie was <laughs> taking this seriously. Yeah. Um, what if what if he had fully um if he had fully decomposed. And it was called mm. Weekend at Bonies. Nice. Or they burn him alive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. Now uh, we're cooking yeah, with human Yeah, there's another flesh. scene scene in this which I thought was distinctly creepy, which is when they, they Barry Bostwick cram shows up. Bernie's body. Huh? When Barry Bostwick shows up. <laughs> no, but we will get to Barry Bostwick in a second. They cram Bernie's body into a suitcase, and then when they open it, when they get to the Bahamas or wherever they go to, they are, like, repulsed by the stench, and they sort of just Febreze him. But to me, that's like a... um, You will never forget what a dead body smells like. Yeah. You know? Like, that to me should have been, like a really sobering moment but they're just like oh bernie stinks and it's like that would actually chill me to my core if i was like had been carrying around a dead body on two separate adventures over the course of one week mm. i would what, really start weekends, to like yeah. take st- two two weekends exactly <laughs> i would really start to take stock of of like how irreparable my life was at that point i think mm. uh, and i think these movies should have explored this this is part of it instead of being like no no it's just a light comedy interesting but yeah. anyway i i think so obviously this wasn't very good you didn't like it any no, more st- I, any, any more statement to it than that no i uh i applaud the ambition of it i'll say that mm. Mm. because here's what i think i reckon people are going to start becoming nostalgic for this kind of sequel mm. I think that as the cinematic universe bullshit shows no signs of slowing down and every sequel has to be this kind of like legacy look back or something that involves another IP, like all this kind of like totally devoid of creative, like, like these sequels were motivated by money as well, but there is a Mm. flavor, a particular genre that is starting to become apparent now in learning that Weekend at Bernie's 2 is the one where they just bring in voodoo, which wasn't in the first one, Mm. and bring the dead body back because the starting point of a Weekend at Bernie's 2 pitch has to be how do we get Bernie back in the... How do we recreate the magic? And I think that's so interesting. I think Speed 2, again, like it's the exact same thing where it's like these ideas that we always used to make fun of because I think we thought the situation was like ha-ha, these silly screenwriters, they actually thought this contrived idea would work. But I'm turning around on that. I think what it would have been every time would be screenwriters going like, ha-ha, well, I have to write this. How do we contrive? So like, yeah. What, yeah, how do we contrive in the most interesting way? Yeah. You know, like they would embrace the contrivance. And I think that in the same way you're seeing like – ps1 graphics be intentionally used in like indie games that are coming Mm. out now because we are now nostalgic for what used to just purely be a technical limitation we are going to see um things like weekend at bernie's 2 happen to movies that maybe feel like they could have had either no sequel or a better sequel because there is a nostalgia and i would say 
Happy Death Day 2 is in this yeah, yeah, totally. zone of I, um, movie. I think what, what you're talking about, like the sequels we're getting nowadays, is you look at, um, I didn't actually see either movie, well, one's not out yet, but like um, the way these films are marketed, two films from this year, uh, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, that mm. like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice has a slowed down version of Deo, the Banana Boat song used in the trailer um which yeah. is like for how that song is used in the original film and just the song itself is like a very silly song a very fun but it's like oh remember this thing look at how seriously we're still taking it and yeah ghostbusters for an empire is like ghostbusters is in a lot of ways like a similar film to Weekend at Bernie's. It's a, it's got a higher mm. concept, but it's an '80s comedy first and foremost. And now we're getting these legacy mm. sequels with like, look how important the Ghostbusters are, you know. And so yeah, it's yeah. like we kind of want to see movies that don't take their source material that seriously. Exactly, man. What a great thing to stump. What a great thing for Weekend at Bernie's too mm. to make me start make a stumble across here. As I, I genuinely think that the bubble is bursting and there'll be a point where it's just sequels just don't get made at all, I think, maybe. But then there will be... We need more disrespectful sequels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, like Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, but I wouldn't... I, like, there are two tiers of disrespectful, right? There's, like, literal fuck you fans, which is what a Rise few of, of these yeah. Skywalker things kind of... Yeah, these Star Wars things kind of um, seem like. But then something like Weekend at Bernie's, which is basically just like, ah, I hope you didn't take the first one too seriously because we're about to make mm. it a little sillier. And, like, I don't know. Like, I think that there is an interesting it has started to appear like an interesting creative challenge to come up with sequel ideas to one-off movies that don't feel like they need sequels like there is something starting to become merit to that and actual creative value to that i think mm. do you have an example of a film that doesn't need a sequel that we could workshop a one that doesn't take it ser- the first one seriously um andy dufresne's hmm, back reckon- in prison <laughs> no, I think it's gotta be something uh that that okay, so like remember when like Call Me By Your Name was announced as getting a sequel because Luca Guadagnino like announces a dozen films yeah, at the yeah. same time. Well there's yeah, the, the, and like, then there's a sequel Andre Eggman wrote a sequel called Find Me to the book, which is like Oh, that's it, because he wanted to do like a before sunrise thing where like let mm. them age in real time, but the book Call Me um fills out a lot of stuff that's glossed over in the movie so like in the movie they they go on holiday together um and it's in the book as like oh this is the one time they were able to be open about their relationship but it's glossed over in the movie and then the sequel flashes back to that a lot and it's very much like bringing back ian malcolm even though he dies in jurassic park bringing him back in the lost world novel because well the movie you know um mm. what's to you want to have um him back and um yeah it's 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 very much a sequel to the to the movie it seems like I but see. now army hammer's 100 percent accountable so it probably won't happen <laughs> although you know yeah. a- according to what he's told piers morgan he was just goofing <laughs> he said it yeah like in the same know. way that you want that you say you want to eat up a child <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, like, I don't know, like, something like Everything Everywhere All at Once it feels like it, it's maybe, like, somewhat similar to what Weekend of, at Bernie's would have been, or, like, I don't know, any mm, of these, like... Best Picture Winner Weekend at Bernie's. No, but, okay, but but I think, I think Best Picture Winner as a category of film has been redefined in that time as well i more mean the cultural space than necessarily like a Mm. film that is similar weekend at bernie's and batman both from 1989 are probably more of a representation of everything everywhere all at once i guess i don't know i don't have an example at at the ready more just saying like they make they make movies now which feel like they can't have sequels and wouldn't it be fun to desperately cloy at a concept for one mm. and see it actually come to life just for the fun of it? Because that's what they used to do. Cabin right. in the Woods. Yeah. Exactly. That doesn't need a sequel. Does it? Can't have one. He got asked at the premiere 
would you think about doing a sequel? And he said, did you watch the movie? (laughs) Well, I haven't given up hope yet. And I don't think you should either, Richard. Okay. Um, Interestingly enough, the Wikipedia page for Weekend at Bernie's 2 is longer than the Wikipedia page for Weekend at Bernie's, um, particularly for its in popular culture section, something the first film does not have. (laughs) So this thing that we're talking about being like this generic shorthand where, where it's like you can just say something is like a Weekend at Bernie's thing and people will know what you mean. The Wikipedia page doesn't talk about that, but the second film's Wikipedia page, which... I thought no one knew about does have one. Would you like me to, to read you some of the examples yes, that please. lists of weekends at Bernie's two references? Uh, it's mentioned in the eight season uh, episode of Seinfeld, the comeback. Uh, the movie is featured in um, staff picks at a video rental store uh, where Kramer recommends it and says it has a hilarious presence um, only for Elaine to say, Bernie's dead, you morons while watching it. Uh, which is re- one of these jokes that I think is very outdated now where it's like engaging with a, the the plot of an actual other piece of media. Like mm. this is a joke that would be funny in a Weekend at Bernie's movie. You know, yeah. like, also it's, like that, it's a joke that... The episode would have aired like, what, within five years of Weekend at Bernie's well, too? There you go. Um, there's an episode of NCIS uh, which uh, has a character uh, admit to watching Weekend at Bernie's 2 um, instead of admitting to watching porn. And they say, even worse. Uh, there's an episode of How I Met Your Mother called How Lily Stole Christmas where Ted attempts to insult Lily for having a poor sense of humour saying, remember that time we heard her laughing and we thought she was watching it Weekend at Bernie's but it turned out she was watching Weekend at Bernie's 2. Um, there is also joke. an episode of How I Met Your Mother called Weekend at Barney's. Mm, um, Beavis and Butthead uh, watched a trailer and an episode for for Weekend at Bernie's Part 7, which features the tagline, Bernie's still dead and he's stiffer than ever, um, and where Bernie is shown to be decaying, which is the same kind of joke we saw in one of the Rocky sequels where they joked about... No, something joked about Rocky having a billion sequels or going to space or whatever because there were three of them out yeah yeah so this is a case where even just a second one is a ridiculous enough for people (laughs) to like be like there's too many sequels um (laughs) there's also a rick and morty episode where uh uh, sorry ricksty minutes the episode that's where it goes to alternate universes um jerry smith is revealed to have written a film called last will and test a meow weekend of a weekend at debt dead cat ladies house two um so referencing weekend at birdies two and uh eric andre show has an episode where um the where ASAP Ferg reenacts the entire Bernie's series by walking around with someone dressed as and acting like Bernie, going up to random people and letting them know, um, and specifically mentioning the second film. Uh, then, of course, there is also another section of the Wikipedia page for <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's 2 for Moving Like Bernie, the improvised, uh, or no, sorry, the, the inspired uh, dance movement that came out of what Bernie looks like dancing while dead which is all to say it's all very surprising to see how much at least at the time weekend at bernie's 2 permeated the immediate zeitgeist right because my understanding of this film before watching it is it's like one of those ones you're surprised to find out exists well not you but normies you know like i didn't realize it had the same yeah yeah like like just from those examples and the way those jokes are structured and stuff it's that it's like weekend at bernie's 2 seems to be like its legacy is it's the perfect bad sequel you know like that mm. it's it's a punchline that there are all these things referencing like the fact that the rick and morty thing is like weekend at dead lady dead cat lady's house too it's like the mm. fact that they need that they specify that it's two is a shorthand for being like it's the bad one and like the yeah, yeah, she was yeah. watching Weekend at Bernie's too, not Weekend at Bernie's, and um, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's interesting um to see it yeah hold that because I I would have assumed similarly that yeah most people don't even know there is a Weekend at Bernie's too, but yeah I think we might be wrong, and especially you know that a lot of these um examples are Gen X 
creators um yeah yeah and or, or you know GX actors or writers or whatever and i think that it's probably quite a you know weekend at bernie's was like a classic film for them and then weekend at bernie's 2 is like it has a ridiculous premise and if you're not on board with that you're not going to get on board with that the idea that how do they have another weekend at bernie's he died you know how are mm. they gonna and then oh he's brought back to life that's so ridiculous um yeah i think it's it's one of those things where it's like a perfect storm of um of of being a great totally. reference that it's a ridiculous premise comedy sequel um and is terrible yeah yeah so you mentioned Barry Bostwick is in this one. He plays sort of an antagonist figure. Uh, this is our sixth Barry Bostwick film for film franchise Four Nights. This does not include his role as Peepaw in American Pie Presents Girls Rules, uh, which yes. we ro- watched for film franchise follow-ups. So there are five other movies we've seen Barry Bostwick in. Um, I don't think you'll get all of them, but uh, you'll try. I think a fat liar where he has, where I, yes, in, correct. I found it incredulous that he had a very large head. Um, yep. he is he in a, an earbud or no. buddies? Sorry, no, or snow but or uh, Santa pup buddies? No, or pup star? No, none of the none okay. of the none of the uh, earbud cinematic universe. Is he in a, a dog related film? He actually is, which is really interesting that you asked because I did wouldn't have thought that would be a natural clue you would get from yeah. Beethoven. So from um, is he in Beethoven? Is about? he in a Beethoven? No, he's no, he's not. But that would have been funny, me, uh, Freudian slipping that. No, he is in One Hundred and One Dalmatians Two: Patches London Adventure. Mm. So he's a voice actor in the animated One Hundred and One Dalmatians sequel. Um, he is also in Richard, The Scorpion King Four: ah, yes, Quest for Power. Um, also in The Land Before Time: XIV: Journey 14. of the Brave. I think that's sixteen. Is it? 14. No, it's the last one, yeah. Um, and uh, his most significant role is he plays a character in Incredibles 2. Um, wow. So there we go. Uh, we talked about titles a little bit for the first film. Let me. What do you think about this? What if this one was called Long Weekend at Bernie's? And I, I, was, I was thinking Next Weekend at Bernie's. Next week, yeah, like like or there are so there are types of week, or or um memorial weekend, you know, like <laughs> Labor weekend set, it, set it on a specifically <laughs> yeah, yeah. on a specific like public holiday. I Martin think that would have been a King cool Day, way to, to um, go with. at Bernie's. At Bernie's, yeah, yeah, Christmas <laughs> at Bernie's. That legitimately Christmas yeah, yeah. at Bernie's would be a great Christmas themed se- sequel title. Yeah, yeah. to Weekend at Bernie's. Um, yeah, or last weekend at Bernie's. And people would be like, it actually doesn't take place on Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Like Christmas Just vacation. Like how they don't go on a vac- they, it does, Yeah, Christmas vacation doesn't take place on Christmas and they don't go on a <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the same thing again. Yeah, I, 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 I knew we were going to talk about this. But yeah, I, I, I was thinking in Next Weekend at Bernie's. Um, because, hmm. yeah, they're, they're, like you say, there are, there, are way, there are two word phrases we use where one of the words is weekend. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're going to continue the franchise right now, Richard. Um, do you want to learn what astonishing news is out there in terms of wow. the future for Weekend at Bernie's, or do you want to pitch your like own? A, one is first? it like uh, some some like <laughs> like second or third tier actor in the film was like, yeah, like we're thinking about it. Like you know, people keep asking us about Weekend at Bernie's three. It is so funny how much worse it is than that. But do you want me to tell you, or do yeah, you want me to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, pitch should we pitch our sequels first okay um how do you want to do it well my my idea was a a remake or like a third one but it's more of like an anthology thing where for some reason and i mean you know you make it with the same you make it the same guys or it's it's whatever it's like a next generation thing but the idea is that this time they have to somehow uh convince the world that their boss is dead um by he's alive and up and about and they have to pretend this is all through ah, some right. elaborate trickery um and he is actually a corpse um you know to to get some sort of probably for some sort of monetary thing like to collect on his life insurance payment um and so they put mm-hmm. st- sunglasses on him and try to um and have people over when he's asleep mm-hmm. and things like that um yeah week weekday at bernie's yeah yeah week premise at bernie's yeah. 
Uh, the only thing I've written down for my continue of the franchise, Richard, is Crank Three. Mm, is yes. Weekend at Bernie's two not the not the gimmick that Crank Three needs? Chev Chalios and Crank Three should only be able to move if music is playing. Yeah, that's like in um, <laughs> that's how you make a funky fresh yeah, yeah. sequel to Crank. Sh- Sean Levy's Crank Three. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Richard, uh, strap in because I was not expecting to be jotting down some of these notes as I wow. put together this episode today. There is actually a screenplay for Weekend at Bernie's 3. Uh, it is written by Pete Johnson and Craig Douglas Miller, and you can read it online at weab3.com. Um, this I've looks got to read like it, it is just... <laughs> No, I didn't read it. But it looks like it's just these guys wrote the script and are just trying to tell enough people about it that maybe they'll get to make it one day. <laughs> like, there is no confirmation on the, them getting the rights or anything. But um, the a, a Reddit thread I found about the film describes it with a, a genre name that I think is, is quite fun that we should work into the public consciousness. They describe it as a fourth wall banger. Uh, which the the website's uh, synopsis for the film reads: Real life Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman attempt to jumpstart their fading acting acting careers with a new sequel to Weekend at Bernie's. But when they seek out Terry Kaiser to reprise his role as Bernie, a gruesome mishap has them treading curiously familiar ground. <laughs> so I assume the movie is about Terry Kaiser dying and. Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman having to weekend at Bernie's him through yeah, yeah. a weekend at Bernie's three production, which is such a like, I love it and hate it at the same time because it feels like I recognize the neural pathways as my own neural pathways for ideas like yeah, that. Yeah. But I'm also wondering if we're rapidly moving away from sequels that are so cheeky in that way, maybe. Mm. So. Um, one Reddit reply uh, on that Reddit thread I found reads, it's currently being filmed. The plot is how they pretend a dead senator from Kentucky is still alive so they continue to have him vote, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> very shrewd Reddit commenter. Yes. Um, there is also a VHS copy of Weekend at Bernie's 3 seen in a 2006 episode of The New Adventures of the Wonder Twins, which is an animated Super Friends uh, spin-off. In it, a superhero named Zan is at downtown video store where he holds up a VHS rental copy of Weekend at Bernie's 3 and explains to his titular Wonder Twin, Zana, that you don't have to see the first two to understand what's going on. You just have to know that Bernie's dead. Um, so again, like another random reference because Weekend at Bernie's 2 actually was a well-known thing that happened. Mm. Um, finally, I found a 48-hour film, not a New Zealand one, from, from an American 48-hour film competition from 2010 called Weekend at Bernie's 3, uh, which has 21,000 views on YouTube and looks to be what you'd probably imagine it would be. Um, so it's interesting, Richard, that all three Weekend at Bernie's movies, including one that we thought no one would remember and one that doesn't actually exist in <laughs> real life they all have these fairly notable footholds in culture you know the first (laughs) one is a term you use to describe a trope the second one is like famous for existing in its in and of itself and being like uh, impossible to make work bad sequel that's so contrived and the third one an extension of that this movie that doesn't exist but it's like the the idea of it existing in itself is such a funny joke because the second one was so bad why would you bother with yeah. a third you know so we've which got a doesn't little, stop them these days yeah that's true but it's just you know we've got this pretty interesting like uh scroll through pop culture here mm. and i think that it's it was fun to discover all of this as i as i researched the episode but yeah yeah do you have any more thoughts on the weekend at bernie's films no i'm ready to rank that franchise well, Richard, we're going to rank that franchise, which is where we go to our letterbox, the, the Cop Option letterboxed, and we rank it with all the other franchises we've watched um, before. Um, so I'm going to add Weekend at Bernie's to the list. Um, I to, to answer Mike's question of does this become 
the new constant, the new perfect zero, a franchise that is equal parts great and equal parts terrible? No, because I think the first one is not that good, and I think the second one is not that bad, or at least has <laughs> so they cancel each other out. <laughs> They do cancel each other out, but I think it would land us just below the speed constant. What do you think? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to put it quite a bit below the the speed constant, to be honest. <laughs> Where is the speed constant these days? I'm struggling to find it. 103? All righty. So beneath it, we've got the Hannibal Lecter. I think Hannibal... Okay. All right. Some of these are clearly better than Weekend at Birdies. Um is it worse than the Well, let me throw out one to Brendan you. Fraser Is it is it better yep. or worse than coming to America? I think it is better than coming to No. Ah, I think it's more interesting than coming to America. What about I think it is a more interesting sequel. Ace Ventura. I think that this is worse than Ace Ventura. Okay, probably. so it goes it's the new 138 then. Look wow. how quickly I zeroed in on exactly where that was going to go, AJ. I mean, you could have gone, is it worse than um, Critters or Pitch Black at 153 and 154? And I would have been like, yeah, put it in between them. That's perfect. <laughs> I don't think I have any more rhyme or reason to this. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Uh, um, speaking yeah. of our letterboxed, list, letterboxed lists, though, uh, mm. it's, I, I, I'm assuming it's time to reveal our next franchise, uh, which we have already teased. And by teased, I mean mm-hmm. just straight yeah, up told you. Uh, we're going to be covering... Correct. Uh, the Shining, uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, and uh, Mike Flanagan's Doctor Sleep uh, in two weeks' time. And Doctor Sleep will be the 900th film we've talked about on on the podcast here, uh, which is That's crazy. Cool. Can we hit 1,000 before, before the end of before the podcast? The end of the podcast? <laughs> I think easily, wouldn't we? We'd probably hit 100 films what well, in we, two in a, what a year and a half yeah when when was two uh years 100 films ago uh we were doing the hunger games i mean oh that was that was less than a year ago yeah but we've, we'll be fine we can do it yeah yeah we'll be fine <laughs> Should be yeah, right. yeah no we'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> anyway everybody thank you so much for listening to this episode um things are a bit hectic at the moment because i'm about to go to canada so we're pre-recording a few episodes in advance i don't know if that will so if there's been any major the- um things happened and in, in the news and True. we don't talk about them just you know it's not because yep. of our political ideology it's because we don't know yet <laughs> So thank you very much for listening. If you want to support us, please follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also hop in our Discord and let us know which movie in the weekend at Bernie's Duology is your favourite. Um, and yeah, it's been this has been fun. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed finally uh, bathing in the weekend at Bernie's mythology, Richard. Mm. Um, and I'm looking forward to many like it in the future. Um, stay tuned for the post credit scene playing that will come at you after this music ends. Um, and see you next weekend. Welcome along to the post credit scene. There's a segment at the end of each episode where if you donate $5 or more over at patreon.com slash Popsha, you get to give us something to talk about in this, the post credit scene. Richard, who's it from and what is it? Today's one comes to us from Bitmore Cheese. Uh, and once again, um, we're Bitmore Cheese sent in a lovely bunch of questions. Uh, not too well. A wee while ago, but I wasn't in, sent them to AJ and then they just got lost for over a year. But... Uh, uh, yeah, we're approaching the end of uh, the questions sent in again. So this is your official call out for questions. You can send them to me because I will actually action them. Or you can uh, send them to Cole Popcher, um on Patreon, however you want to. Um, it's fine. Uh, but Bitmore Cheese asks... Thank you, Richard. Greetings, fair personages. Who was your dream director to work with and what would you do for them on set? It does not have to be sexual. This is such a hard question because let me reveal something about my work ethic. Uh, if I'm not director on set, I'm I'm pretty useless on set. <laughs> Unless I'm maybe acting as well. I think that might actually be my answer. I think I would like to act for I don't whoever you know any any no name director mm. i think i the thing i'd want to do most for them is probably act if if not write for them but mm. even then i don't know how disciplined of a writer i am but i think being act being directed by martin scorsese or something yeah i think um the most value i would get out of that collaboration yeah, yeah i think i think yeah the thing is like um 
yeah you would get the most out of acting for a director like you just have that that clear mm. um uh channel of communication uh i'm gonna say i mean there are people like um uh, like it would ju- i would just find it so fascinating to be on a quentin tarantino set like just to have that mm insane energy directed at me um mm. i think would be fun but yeah i mean um my is there much footage of quentin tarantino directing uh there's like b-roll and stuff but a lot of it's um silent um i bet it'd be super fun to be directed by oh yeah I, i've seen like jamie fox talk about it and stuff like that that like he directs in like references so be like you know in this movie when there's this shot and he's kind of doing this i want you to do that um i do that yeah i do that yeah, I, yeah. Do that. Yeah. I i when i'm watching stuff i just write down like shots i like or like little performance tidbits i like to refer back to but uh, i'm gonna say bennett miller would be who I'd want to be directed by, uh, because who is that? Uh, he directed Capote, Moneyball, and uh, Foxcatcher, and it's like just all of his movies, or or like Todd Field, you know, one of these directors doesn't make much, but all the the performances always get nominated for Oscars. Um, true, true, yeah, yeah. 